IDE XT hard drives, something that most vintage computer enthusiasts are either unaware of or are told to stay away from. Even though you might think it looks like a standard old school IDE AT disk that you found in many computers up until the early 2000s, it's not. This is actually an IDE XT drive, and they only work with 8 bit controllers. It is technically an IDE controller, but it only runs at 8 bits wide, so it's not compatible with typical IDE hard drives. There were a handful of custom drives made at the time that were specifically designed for this interface, and finding one that works today is darn near impossible. That is not standard IDE, that's 8-bit IDE. Although that's a really cool option to have built in and you don't ever see that, it's pretty much useless. They're real hard to find. Most of them are probably unreliable. If you find them on eBay, they're definitely overpriced. Don't bother. IDE was introduced around 1989. And depending on who you ask, it either stands for Integrated Drive Electronics or Intelligent Drive Electronics. And then later when they started introducing IDE CD-ROM drives and zip drives and other things, the D in it changed from drive to device. It was also generally known as ATA for AT attachment. The AT being named after the IBM AT computer. Or more specifically, Parallel ATA when it became necessary to differentiate it from serial ATA. But these drives and controller cards I have here are not ATA because they were not designed for the 16-bit AT bus. These are 8-bit drives and controllers designed for XT class computers. So that's why these are known as IDE XT or XTA hard drives. However, these drives are not to be confused with the XT IDE, which is a currently available open source interface card that lets you use modern or at least semi modern IDE hard drives and compact flash cards with vintage PCs. Despite the similar name, the IDE XT drives I'm showing in this video will not work with one of these modern XT IDE interface cards. Here's the first drive I have, which I already demonstrated the interesting noises it makes. It's a Western Digital WD93028-X. They also made an AT version of this, but the XT version has that dash X on the end. It was made in 1991. The next one is a Seagate ST325X. This is another 20 megabyte hard drive, just like that Western Digital, and it was made in the 27th week of 1990. And finally, here is the Seagate ST351A-X. Now, as that model number indicates, this is actually switchable between a 16-bit AT interface and an 8-bit XT interface. This is a 40 megabyte hard drive, and it was made in the 27th week of 1991. And by the way, I believe these ST351A-X drives were both the last 40 megabyte hard drives ever made and the last stepper motor hard drives ever made. I believe these were available until at least 1994. In addition to Western Digital and Seagate, IDE XT hard drives were also made by Connor, Epson, and Miniscribe. And here's the first of the two controller cards I have, or actually these are not necessarily controller cards because as the name Integrated Drive Electronics indicates the controller is built into the electronics of the drive. And this is really just an interface between the computer's bus and the drive. So this is an IDE XT interface card. This one is a Western Digital WDXT150. You can see the copyright date of 1988. It was made in the 24th week of 1989. One different thing about these XT interfaces compared to AT IDE interfaces is that the two hard drives get individual connectors. They're not both daisy chained off the same cable. So you get one connector and one cable for each drive if you have two hard drives connected. That's the same thing with the Seagate ST05X interface card. Two connectors for the two drives. This one looks quite a bit more advanced because it uses surface mount chips. This unused pinout is for an optional floppy drive controller that would also have a controller chip here. 
but this is not equipped with that. And it was made in the 36th week of 1991. Another thing both of these cards have is an onboard power connector because they were designed to be used as hard cards where the hard drive would be mounted on the same bracket as the interface card and it would get its power from the card rather than the computer's power supply. There are also some computers with an IDEXT interface built into the motherboard, especially in the European market where XT class machines had a longer shelf life than in North America. But here in the US, Tandy used IDE XT hard drives in their later Tandy 1000 machines. Here is a Tandy 1000 RLX, and it has an onboard IDE XT hard drive interface, which Tandy called their smart drive interface. A different version of IDE XT was used in the low end IBM PS1 and PS2 machines and in the Sega Terra drive, which was built for Sega by IBM. These drives have a 44 pin cartridge connector, which provides power to the drive through the interface cable. IDE XT drives were also used with the Commodore Amiga 500 computer in the A590 external hard drive attachment. And despite the notion of IDE XT being a proprietary interface, there is actually some cross compatibility between different brands. For example, the built-in interface in this Tandy will work with either Western Digital or C8 hard drives. And I've tested it and this Western Digital interface card works fine with the Seagate drives. However, one quirk with that cross compatibility is that you may need to change a jumper setting depending on if the interface you're using requires the bus reset to be active high or active low. For example, with this Seagate ST325X drive, setting this jumper to the outer position sets the bus reset to active high, while changing the jumper to the middle position sets the bus reset to active low. So if you get one of these drives and it doesn't seem to work, and it may not even spin up at all if you have this in the wrong position. Try changing that jumper and that may fix the problem. Also, these IDE XT interfaces will not work with a compact flash adapter. Even though some compact flash cards can be switched into an 8-bit mode, it's still not compatible. Or at least I've never heard of anyone being able to get it to work. Which is a shame because many of these IDE XT interfaces were used in low-profile, all-in-one and laptop computers which either only have one ISA expansion slot like this Tandy or don't have any expansion slots at all which would make it impossible to use a modern and readily available XT CF card adapter or with this Tandy I would need to use up the only slot it has which I would rather put in something like a Sound Blaster card. So here's my first test of the Western Digital Drive connected to the Tandy's built-in smart drive interface. So I'll turn it on boots right up into DOS and it works fine. This Western Digital Drive is not auto parking whereas the two Seagate drives are. So if you plan to move it you have to manually park the heads before you shut off the power. So I have a program here which will do that. And now I can turn it off. And here's the Seagate ST351A slash X drive working with the onboard smart drive interface which should be no surprise that it works because it's what the computer came with originally As you can see, I have more stuff installed on this drive because it's the drive I have normally in this computer. The seeking sound on this drive is quite a bit more scratchy sounding than the Western Digital Drive, but it's also a lot faster. The random seek time with this ST351A slash X drive is 24.77 milliseconds, which is actually better than the 28 milliseconds it's rated at. And for comparison, the Western Digital Drive is over 70 milliseconds. Data transfer rate of 325.6 kilobytes per second, which is pretty good for an 8-bit XT interface. 
Now even though this Tandy has a built-in IDXT hard drive interface on the motherboard, you can still use an ISA card hard drive interface. So I have the Western Digital card installed and connected to the Seagate drive. So this is the Seagate drive with the Western Digital ISA card interface. And again, everything works fine. This time I'll use PC tool system information to measure the performance. Actually, the average seek time was even better this time at 21.03 milliseconds. Data transfer rate 207 kilobytes per second, which was not as good as the built-in interface. And at least on Tandy systems, these drives do have a sleep feature. Tandy supplied a small utility called HD Spin, which takes up about 1K of RAM, and it automatically shuts off the hard drive after 10 minutes of inactivity. And now the hard drive has shut off, but if I issue a command which accesses the disk, you'll hear it spin up again. And this drive does auto park, so when I'm done I can just turn it off. Another unique thing about these drives is that it is actually possible to low-level format them, which is something you're told to never try to do to an IDE AT hard drive, but for these XT IDE hard drives, when you first install them, you actually do need to low-level format them. Both of these interface cards have a ROM chip with that low-level format program on them, accessed by typing in a command to the DOS debug program. Here's that 20 megabyte Seagate drive, and it has one of the best hard drive spin-up sounds I've ever heard. And the way you do a low-level format with it is to enter the DOS debug command. And then type G equals C800 colon 5 and hit enter. And now we're in the IDE Super BIOS revision 1.0, copyright Western Digital 1988. Current drive is C and that's fine, so I'll just hit enter. Current interleave is 3. These 8 bit interface cards generally cannot go below 3 to 1 interleave, so I'll just leave it set to that. It asks you if you want to dynamically configure the drive. I'll say yes. And here it asks a whole bunch of parameters, but the only ones we need to worry about are the cylinders and heads. So for this drive, it has 615 cylinders and four heads, or at least that's what it pretends to have, because these drives actually do sector translation, just like modern IDE hard drives. So even though it only has a single platter and actually only two heads, it pretends it has four heads and 615 cylinders because that was the most common parameters for a 20 megabyte hard drive. So I'll enter 615 cylinders and four heads and hit enter. It asks you if you want to virtually configure the drive. I just say no. And now it's ready to begin formatting with interleave 3, and I'll just say yes. And now it's formatting, and I'll come back in a couple minutes when it's done. And now it's done. It asks if you want to format bad tracks. That's if you have one of these Western Digital drives which actually lists the bad tracks on the drive itself. But these Seagate drives don't, so I'll just say no. And format was successful. Put DOS disk in A and hit any key when ready. Now it's going to reboot and from this point on it's pretty much standard fare for formatting a hard drive. First you do F disk and then you do format. Here's F disk and I'll do create a DOS partition, create a primary partition. Ask if you want to use the maximum available size and set it active. You just say yes. And now I'll restart again, and now we'll do the format. 
And here it is formatting, 20.37 megabytes. And now the format is complete and there are no bad sectors. So now when we restart, it'll start up from the hard drive. There it goes, we have a C propped with 21,176,320 bytes free. These Western Digital Drives do have a well-earned reputation for unreliability. You can often get them working again by oiling the stepper motor, but that does not always work and it may not be a permanent solution. However, the Seagate drives are surprisingly reliable. I have five of them in total, two of the 20 megabyte versions and three of these 40 megabyte versions, and they all work perfectly with no bad sectors. So that's about it for these IDE XT hard drives and interface cards. I just wanted to demonstrate that they do exist. They're not as uncommon as you might think, and many of them are still working perfectly fine today. And in case you're looking for one, I'll include a link to a web page I uploaded with a list of all the known makes and models of IDE XT hard drives.